This week I've been driving the 2020 Chevy Silverado. This is the RST trim. It's the crew cab. We're gonna get into all of the trims in just a second. We're gonna take a look at the exterior here. We're gonna take a look at the bed, the engine, the interior, the technology in here. We're gonna take it for a drive. We're gonna talk about the price and competition and that'll wrap this video up, but let's just get into it. All right, let's start off with trim levels. There are a bunch of different trim levels, a bunch of different options and configurations. So uh, I got my trusty notes here so we don't get anything wrong. First off, you have cabs and beds. You have a regular cab with a long bed. You have the double cab with the standard bed. You have the crew cab with the short bed and a crew cab with the standard bed. The long bed is 98.18 inches. The standard bed is 79.44 inches and the short bed is 69.92 inches. This is the crew cab with a standard bed. Next up, you get to choose trims where you start off with the work truck. Then you have the custom, you have a custom trail boss. You have the LT, which I've reviewed. You have the RST, which is this one. You have the LT trail boss, the LTZ and the high country, which again, I've reviewed recently. So you can check out those videos down in the description. And each of these trims have a range of engine options, six total engine options to choose from, which I'm not gonna dive into all of them, but when we touch on the engine here, we'll talk about a few options that you get with this RST. All right, so first off, this is the RST. Chevy says it's made to be street art, so it's the more stylish designed uh, version of the Silverado. It has a body colored bumpers and center grill bar and door handles matched up with high gloss black mirror caps. We don't have those mirror caps because we have special mirrors here. We'll jump into in just a second. You also get LED lighting, including the headlamps, daytime running lamps, tail lamps and fog lamps. And this comes standard with 18 inch wheels, which we'll take a closer look at in just a second. You also get the easy lift power lock and release tailgate. Again, we'll take a look at in just a second. Let's start off with the front end design here. So I've definitely been one to scrutinize Chevy on their Silverado designs recently, but I quite like what they've come up with for 2020. The headlight design, it's squished in. You have the little bent in parts coming around the headlights. They give it a more muscular, angular look. You have a nice molded styled hood. And again, this one, the RST has that body colored front bumper. We also get those LED headlights daytime running lights and fog lights, which look really good on this truck. Moving along the side of the truck, it is the crew cab. It is a big, long truck. One of the main features to look at here are those trailering mirrors. These are added options. If you don't get the trailering mirrors, you do get the gloss black caps on the side mirrors, but these are massive, big trailering mirrors. They do let you see a lot, but they are pretty intrusive. So if you're not gonna be trailering, definitely don't get these. But if you are gonna be trailering, which this is a great setup for hauling, then those mirrors do come in handy. You can also see the 18 inch bright silver painted aluminum wheels that we have here. And these are the standard option on this truck, but I think they look really good and they're nice and bright, which help contrast with the darker paint color. And I think they look good with this combination. Moving around the back here, you do get those two dual chrome exhaust tips that accentuate the design and sportiness of this truck. You get the Silverado badge, the Chevrolet stamped into the bed, and of course that RST badge. And before we jump into the bed of the truck, I'll point out that the exterior color here is shadow gray metallic. They do have a lot of cool colors for this. I like the white, I like the black. The red looks pretty decent as well. Although I don't know if I'd necessarily want a red truck. This color isn't necessarily my favorite on the truck, but it does give it a kind of premium look and I can dig it. All right, and this truck does have the trailering package. So you do get a trailer hitch back here along with a seven pin and four pin connectors. And you also get Chevy's trailering guidance. Now, as far as the tailgate goes, it is a pretty smooth drop. It's not the power up and power down like we had in the high country, but it is a nice drop. You also get steps integrated into the corner of the bumper on both sides, which makes it easier to climb into the bed. 
and back here you do have the tie downs you have integrated lights you can get a bed camera this one does not have that but it is a standard size bed it works like a truck should work and chevy has done everything they can to make it easier to get in and out and to reach over the sides even though this is a tall truck we also have the sliding glass window in the back so you have a pass through into the bed but with that let's take a look under the hood and check out the engine all right so under the hood here we have the 6.2 liter ecotech 3 v8 engine that pushes 420 horsepower 460 foot pounds of torque and is matched up to a 10 speed automatic transmission this setup gives you best in class power and towing with 13,400 pounds of towing and other engine options on the rst start off with a 2.7 liter turbocharged engine you can also get a 5.3 liter ecotech 3 v8 or a 3 liter duramax turbo diesel inline six and that's the premium engine option on this and it's actually one that i would really like to test out but of course this 6.2 gives you a lot of power a lot of fun and is perfect for this setup and moving right along let's take a look at the interior starting with those back seats All right, and first of all, this is a very spacious interior. The crew cab doesn't just have a lot of space in the front, but the back seats as well. I have a ton of leg room, a ton of knee room, and this seat is just as far back as the driver's seat. I still get a ton of headroom. There's an extra bump in the roof line right here for extra headroom. You do get features like two USB ports, one a USB type A, one a USB type C. You also get an accessory plug back here. You get pretty small AC vents for the back and there's no extra ones along the roof or the side here. So the back seats kind of skimp on airflow, which my kids made sure to point out to me as we're driving in this Texas heat. We do have leather seats back here, which is an added option and pretty nice. We have the same trimming that you have in the front, which is all nice materials. You also get a pull down armrest over here with integrated cup holders. You also have cup holders up here in the back of the console and you get storage. These seats fold up, they fold down and you have storage in the back of the seats as well. So let's move into the front seats, check out the rest of the interior, the tech in this truck and we'll take it for a drive. And before we jump in the front seats, let me actually take just a second to say, if you're not checking out TXGarage.com, you should definitely go check it out. We have a lot of articles published there from a lot of different authors doing vehicle reviews as well in written form. But we also do news coverage and event coverage, especially from here in Texas. So if you're interested in some of that, go check out TXGarage.com. I have a few more things to plug for you, but I'll do it at the end of the video if you want to stay for that. Uh, let's get back into the review. All right, and we're gonna start off the interior by looking at the seats and the trimming here. We have the convenience package, which gives us bucket seats, a 10-way power adjustable driver's seat with power lumbar dual zone automatic climate control and a front center console the interior color here is named gideon slash very dark atmosphere and we have leather appointed seats we also have this wood trimming on the doors as well as leather with white stitching on the dash we also have what chevy calls the leather package now this basically gives you leather rear seats that match the leather front seats that we get with the convenience package we also have the convenience package 2 which includes sirius xm radio that power sliding rear window a rear defogger the chevrolet infotainment 3 plus system with an 8 inch touchscreen display and the 120 volt box mounted power outlet so tech wise we do have that 8 inch hd color touchscreen display we do get apple carplay and android auto you also have an available 4g lte wi-fi hotspot and this is the chevy infotainment 3 system which all in all is decent it's relatively responsive it's got some nice clear functions even though it might look a little meh and one of the other things you get with this truck that this screen makes possible is the rear view camera. 
Now it is a pretty good high quality rear view camera. You do get some trailering functions, but you don't get the 360 view. The Silverado does have an optional 360 camera system. This truck does not have that. And another thing you get up here, just like in the rear seats, you get a USB type A and a USB type C plug. And in this massive console here, you also get another USB type A and type C port. And again, this is a massive console. There is a ton of room for stuff up here. All right, and with that, let's, uh, let's take it for a drive. So driving wise, what can I say? This is a truck. It drives like a truck. It feels like a truck, which is a plus. You do get drive modes that consist of a normal mode, a sport mode, and an off-road mode. You have an auto setting for your four-wheel drive. You have a two-wheel high, a four-wheel high, and a four-wheel low. This isn't the ZR1 package or anything. It's just a four by four. And although I haven't taken this particular one off-road, I have driven the Silverado off-road before, and I know it will handle it just fine. Fuel economy wise on this truck, you're looking at 16 miles per gallon city, 20 miles per gallon highway with a combined of 17. Now I've been averaging 12.7 miles to the gallon. That has a lot more to do with the way that we drive these vehicles for testing, leaving it idle a lot for doing filming around it. The Texas heat doesn't help much running that AC. And of course we gotta have some fun with it in sport mode. So we're getting a lot lower fuel economy than you'd probably get on day-to-day -day driving. But just note, this isn't the most fuel efficient truck. And I think that that 6.2 liter V8 engine does sound really good in here. You do get tech in there like cylinder deactivation, so it is more fuel efficient than just the straight V8. But as I've said, it's not the most fuel efficient option out there. But with that, let's hear a little bit of that engine note. Yeah, it's not super loud, but it does sound good. And if you're really into the super loud truck, a little bit of an aftermarket exhaust, this thing will sound really sweet. And this truck is built for towing. Like I said, the specific engine option with this trailering pack, this gives you the best in class power in towing, that 13,400 pounds of towing. So if you wanna hook a decent boat up to this or a trailer, this truck should give you no issues with hauling that thing. There are some things that you noticeably don't get in this truck. You don't get the heads up display like you get in other Silverados. You don't get that 360 camera like I mentioned. You don't get some of the safety systems. You don't get the radar guided cruise control. You don't get uh, sensors. You don't get the 360 sensors. But with adding all that stuff definitely adds cost. So that becomes, uh, do you wanna pay more money to get those features or do you wanna pay less money and you're okay driving without those features? Me personally, I think it's okay without the features. I would love to have the 360 camera in this truck. Anything this big really deserves to have those cameras nowadays. It's not that it's difficult to park or anything, but just the peace of mind of having those, it's worth everything. All right guys, and with that, let's uh, find a place to pull over and we'll talk about some price and competition and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, with all that done and dusted, let's talk about price and the competition. So the base price on an RST is $37,200, which I think is a really great deal for a truck. Our review truck here with all the options it has is $54,360, which for a truck with the leather seats, the bigger engine and some nice amenities is a pretty good deal as well. That being said, it still wouldn't be my first option when buying a truck, so let's talk about some of the competition. And do you really need to spell out competition for a truck like this? It's a 1500. It competes with the Ram 1500. It competes with the Ford F-150. It competes with the Toyota Tundra, the Nissan Titan. And all in all, you're going to like the truck that you like. My hot take on the truck segment here in the U.S. is that my number one favorite truck right now is still the Ram 
1500. A very, very close second is the Ford F-150. If you know anything about my history and seeing it in my Ford reviews, you'll know that I'm basically a Ford guy. My dad and grandfather both, both own Ford F-150s. Uh, I really love the F-150 brand. But for right now, the Ram 1500 is a little bit higher than the F-150 in my eye. And in third place, I think, is a tie between a few different things. I think this Chevy truck really takes third place. The Nissan Titan, I think, is just right there tied with it. I think the new Titan is a very good truck, and I've got a couple of reviews out for that. So if you're interested, you can go check those out. And lagging behind a bit for me is the Toyota Tundra. I think it's a great truck. It's a great price. It's perfect for what it is, which is just a basic truck with a basic uh, engine platform. Where it falls behind for me is that engine that they've been using for forever now, and the technology in it is lagging way behind the competition. I think they've got some stuff on the horizon, but uh, I'm not always very optimistic about uh, Toyota updating their trucks very significantly because they usually just don't do that. And again, that's just my opinion, my hot take, so uh, take it for what it is. But with that, let's wrap up the video. All right, guys. Well, I hope you did enjoy that video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the RST Silverado. If you did enjoy the review, I hope that you do subscribe to the channel. We put out weekly reviews just like this one. So if it's something that you're into, please do subscribe here. And with that, that's the end of this week's review. Thanks for watching. All right, so that is the end of the review, but it's not quite the end of the video. I promised you guys I was gonna pitch you on a little bit extra, and if you're staying this long into the video, I really appreciate it. So I do hope you go check out TXGarage.com. A lot of great content on there, like I've already mentioned, but we also signed up with a site called Locals.com. This is a Patreon-like site where you get local communities together or communities of enthusiasts like automotive enthusiasts like we are. So we set up a page called TX Garage dot locals .com, and we're putting extra content over there you can sign up for free you can follow us for free but you can also pay to get some premium content and we're not using it to line our pockets or anything we're using it to help push this youtube channel and help promote extra content for you guys so if that's something that you're interested please go check it out again sign up for free if you would like uh, let's help build this community over here. And if you want to throw a few extra bucks our way, that's fine too. But again, thanks for watching, guys.